Hey everybody, this is Lauren Bailey with Factor 8, and we're talking today about a really critical best practice in building your new hire training program. So this is one of several tips out there. We're going to dig a little bit more into building skills logically over time, or what we also like to call just-in-time training. So there's two major mistakes when structuring a new hire training program. One is we don't give them enough information up front and they get to the floor flailing a little bit and they have a long ramp time because that experience has to supplement the learning. The second mistake is we try to teach them everything and it's basically fire hose, you know, to the face and they're not retaining all of that information and there's a period of overwhelm. Well, I'm here to tell you that although there's a happy medium, the bigger mistake there is actually the second example. When you overwhelm a rep with everything they need to ever know in the future about a product or customer scenario or systems or process, etc., then what you're doing is lowering their confidence. You are much better off with reps coming out of training who don't know what they don't know because then you're promoting some badassery. These guys come out ready to hit the phones because they know everything. Perfect. That's exactly what you want. So here's the sweet spot. Structure your new hire training or your onboarding training based around what we call a level one or competent on the job. There's two different ways to do that. One of them is take a look at the time period. The perfect training program is gonna prep your rep for their first 30 to 45 days on the floor. And that's it. Don't worry, if you're doing it right, you're gonna bring them back into the class so that you can help fill in the rest of the gaps. And guess what? They're ready for the learning and they're eager for the learning then because they know finally what they don't know and what they need from you in training, right? So if they're gonna spend their whole first month leaving a ton of voicemails, trying to get people to talk to them and building a book, don't teach them about the complexities of negotiating a deal. Focus on that. What are the sales skills they need? Leaving a voicemail. Who do I call first in my book? Territory management, account strategies, lead qualifications, sales qualification, effective emails, introductions, setting follow-up calls. You getting the gist? This is what they're doing all day, every day. 90% of reps out there feel like their first month could be replaced with an outgoing voicemail message. So that probably tells you that's the most important skill, right? Here's another one for you. Teach them to capture new contacts, to treat leads as clues. Don't let them throw away 50% of their account base or their lead list because the data is wrong. Because at any given time, 50% of the data is going to be wrong. So you teach them how to hunt, how to scour, how to go find the new decision maker, how to get the right contact information. And now they literally have double the account base or lead list to work with because they can turn water into gold. That's a horrible analogy, but you're with me, right? It also makes it more fun. And new managers can help them by saying, hey, how many new contacts did you add today? Anyway, I'm diving too far into that skill because it's one of our favorite classes called Capturing Contacts, but reps need this in their first month. Now let's get back on point. New hire training is supposed to prepare them for their first month on the job or for competency level one. And I'll share with you how I break down sales competencies. Level one rep should be able to get out there and document a current need or situation. A level two rep can help uncover that potential need or situation. A level three rep is going to advance that need. For example, yeah, I need a CRM, but not right now. They're gonna help make sure I need it now. Make sense? A level four rep is gonna help create a need. I didn't even know what I was missing by not having a CRM system in place right now, but a level four rep is gonna get me there. In terms of time frame, a level one rep is a newbie and they're probably gonna stay that way until month four to six. Two takes up from there. When you're at three or four, you're at a year, maybe sometimes even two years of experience. And there's a great benefit to building your training so that it gets them there over time or just in time training. Because not only are you building confidence and lowering overwhelm, but at the same time, you're getting them to invest in themselves and to look forward to the training so that that next level of certification perhaps is a benefit in your organization, 
right? If they come in, they learn everything, they're supposed to be up to speed in six months and they never get any more development, you're still going to lose them because one of the top things that reps value is that ongoing career development. It's been a top reason for attrition in multiple studies over the last five years. So there's your answer. Ramp them up to speed faster by teaching them just what they need to know. At the same time, help them build confidence over the phone by not feeling overwhelmed. And figure out what they need to know by mapping that around their first 45 days on the job or that ability to just get out there and document the situation versus advance it or create the need. I hope this is helpful. Tune back in for more tips on how to build great new hire training onboarding programs.